Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Brightpath. And in this week's episode, I want to talk about managing a crisis in a remote work environment. As we've shifted to remote work, there's no doubt that the way we have to think about business continuity and crisis management has changed. And now we have many more remote and hybrid-based workers where the crisis profile, the continuity planning profile, is different than it was before. Um, this rise in, in remote work has to lead to changes in how we think about these things. And so I want to talk through how to adapt some of your crisis management and business continuity strategies for this remote work environment. Remote work brings up a number of challenges. It creates a different kind of communication barrier because I can't just walk down the hall and talk to a remote employee that's seven states away. I have to call her. I have to connect with her via Slack or Teams. I have to set up a meeting with her. Um, those kind of flyby discussions, the casual discussions, the water cooler discussions as we used to describe them, don't apply as much in a remote first environment. It also creates a different cybersecurity problem because it used to be that everyone was in your office and you had physical security barriers and controls and they were inside of your firewall and your information security setup and you had complete control of all of that. And now you don't because when they're home, they're on the consumer internet. They're connected through Xfinity or Comcast or a DSL provider or Starlink or something else. That is how they're obtaining their connectivity. Um, rather than being completely under your control, now there's elements of this, routers and wireless access points and others that might be not secure because they haven't taken the steps to secure those properly. There's also some challenges with remote work, as you have likely experienced, around how do you maintain employee morale and engagement? Um, how do you manage their productivity and performance? All of which has had to change since the rise of this remote work world that we live in today during the pandemic, the early days of the pandemic in 2020. So there's a number of communication strategies that you can use to mitigate several of these factors. And we've talked about some of these in the past, but it's utilizing multiple communication channels like Slack, email, Teams, uh, other capabilities like that. It's having more regular check-ins and updates. It's about leading differently in terms of leading more towards or managing more towards results instead of the way that the work gets done. So you're really managing the outputs of those employees as opposed to having their butts in a seat and being able to watch and sustain and manage that by looking at them, by looking at what they're doing. Um, it's even more important with remote workers to have uh, consistency and clarity in your messaging and to leverage the collaboration tools and platforms that are available to you. From a cybersecurity standpoint, having good remote access security protocols in place, uh, using multi-factor authentication, uh, requiring a company VPN to be used or having or just implementing an always on VPN as many of our clients have done, um, but also educating your employees on cybersecurity best practices in their home. How do they make sure that their wireless wi their wireless internet, their Wi-Fi, for example, um, is secure? And that they're using passwords that are not, you know, password or, you know, Molly, uh, if their name is Molly, um, as an example. And to make sure that they're patching and updating those systems the same way they think about, you think about patching and updating your own systems, laptops and others. From a business continuity standpoint, hopefully at this point you have adapted your business continuity plans to deal with remote work scenarios. But if you haven't, that's something that you'll want to take a look at. What does it mean now to have a regional natural disaster in Virginia? I'm just making this up. For example, when your company is based in Minnesota, if there's a regional natural disaster in Virginia and you have 125 remote employees in Virginia, suddenly that's something that you care more about than you may have cared about five years ago. So understanding where your teams are at, what their underlying internet uh, infrastructure or internet provider is, thinking about backups in terms of wireless hotspots or things like that, uh, or at least having a supply of those you can send out, are plausible activities from a BC standpoint that you should think about. But practicing remote work simulations and drills and including your remote, remotely based employees in your exercises is, is an important thing to consider. 
Another factor is just employee support and well-being. We've talked before about how the mental health challenges with remote employees are different. It's that uh, ensuring that they're connected, that they feel connected to the organization, um, that they feel supported in what they're doing, but also helping them uh, establish good work-life balance and setting appropriate boundaries for the work that they are doing uh, so that they have an off time, so to speak, um, and they've really been able to to delineate uh, that that from a work-life balance standpoint, that you have helped them set boundaries between work and personal time. Uh, offering flexible work schedules, again, as a part of managing to an outcome or a result, as opposed to, hey, you have to work nine to five because that's when everyone else works. Uh, I think those are valuable things to consider. From a crisis standpoint, when a crisis impacts their area, I think leading first with empathy and understanding that they're out on their own and that this creates a unique situation for them to work through. Uh, having clear communication, as we've talked about before, but maintaining transparency and openness throughout that disruption that you're dealing with, and then encouraging feedback and involvement from those teams, continuing to engage with remote employees is valuable. From a technology standpoint, of course, tools like Zoom or Microsoft Teams are valuable. Uh, you also have uh, WebEx and Google Meet, and there are tons of other tools you may be using. But continue to think about how you can leverage technology to make them feel like a part of the team, to enhance collaboration are all important things. Um, these are all some good examples, some good ideas. Let me give you, you know, I think just some good case studies of this. Uh, one of our clients uh, has really shifted to being more of a remote first environment in their hiring. It has paid off huge ben benefits to them um, from the standpoint of really opening up the hiring market from where they can obtain talent. But it has created challenges for them in that now they have a whole different scale of issues from a disruption standpoint to think about that they didn't have before. We've helped them evolve their business continuity plans to account for remote employees so that we understand an impact to Virginia, to my previous example, might have an impact for them, even though they don't have an office within a few states of there. Um, using uh, mass notification tools that can plot where their employees are against a disruption and show those impacts has really helped them send broader disruption communication and are you okay kind of communication to check in on their teams throughout a disaster or a crisis situation. So these are some examples of how you can make sure your remote employees are included, that they feel like they're part of the team. You've accounted for them from a business continuity standpoint and you are supporting them during a crisis. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.